the Resident Evil series has had a defining influence on the gaming industry since its first title. We wouldn't have a lot of things without it. It invented the horror genre, inspired Silent Hill, and created the modern third-person shooter. Possibly the most popular and beloved of the series, Resident Evil 4 was a huge change in direction and play style for the established franchise, and a major success. It's not just gameplay that changes in this title. Previous games were in sprawling city centers or crumbling mansions, not distant rural villages and ancient castles. It's a unique feeling, replacing the chaos and suffocating sensations of Resident Evil 2 with an isolating, eerie mood. This time, there are no zombies. Instead, we have the ganados, a Spanish word for cattle, humans who are infected with the plagas, meaning plague. They are smarter, faster, use tools, and work together to take Leon on. They are strangely human, yet entirely inhuman, with red eyes and bestial growls. Most of all, the themes behind this game address a new subject. This is not about a virus made in a lab, or the dangers of science unchecked, or corrupt governments and companies. This is a small village, taken in by a radical cult, and turned quite literally into mindless followers. Instead of attacking unethical science, this game critiques extremist religion, which is interesting considering this was the first major Resident Evil title to come out since the events of 9-11 in 2001. Today, we'll discuss the themes, messages, and design of Resident Evil 4. This is not the first time we've seen Leon S. Kennedy. He was one of the heroes of Resident Evil 2, the game in which he was a rookie cop out on his first day, attacked by swarms of zombies. Now he's an experienced soldier, with special training and a lot of practice killing the undead, and it's obvious in his new demeanor and behavior. There's an edge to him that's almost a swagger, not overconfidence, but confident enough to be a little showy. He's tough, resourceful, and full of witty one-liners, the perfect equation to make the stereotypical American hero. The game discusses this. Multiple dialogues refer to the idea of Hollywood movies, and of the story as just that, a fictional story with Leon as the typical American hero. On the surface, it's the developers acknowledging the fact that these games are just that. Goofy, outlandish stories with goofy, outlandish plots. The reason Resident Evil 4 works so well is because it knows exactly what it is, and doesn't take itself seriously or try too hard. At the same time, it really isn't a Hollywood movie. There are some aspects there the handsome, funny hero, the former teammate turned traitor, the action girl romantic interest, the president's daughter who needs rescuing. It would make a decent film. The difference is, while all the plot beats match, the actual events in-game go very differently. A Hollywood hero tends to be a one-man army, an almost unstoppable force. Leon is actually quite stoppable. He's knocked out, kidnapped, infected, tossed about like a doll, all throughout the game. It is only due to the help of others that he survives, let alone completes his mission. In-game, we see a few instances where Ada saves him from Sadler or Mendez. You see even more in the side story, Separate Ways, where it's revealed that Ada spent most of the whole game keeping Leon alive. 
Louise Sarah also has a big hand in keeping him around by retrieving medicine to suppress the Plaga. And throughout the game, Leon works with Ashley, the girl he's protecting, in order to move forward. This is a team effort, which most Hollywood films aren't. It's the trust and teamwork that gets Leon and his allies through, and it's what destroys Sadler. He fights alone, trusting no one, and it's Ada and Leon together who kill him. This team narrative raises the goofy story to higher levels. Leon suffers and struggles. He becomes human in the way he is injured and how he needs help. He's a much more sympathetic character for it, and so is Ada, since she goes out of her way to help him, to her own detriment. The story deals with a cult called Los Illuminados, which sounds rather similar to the Illuminati, and no wonder. They both have the same root word, the Latin Illuminatus, meaning enlightened. It's no coincidence that the game's cult shares its name with an infamous secret society said to have great power and evil intentions. In fact, Sadler wants to become a real-life Illuminati by infecting the president and eventually gaining control over all world leaders. The game has multiple puzzles that the player must complete to continue, though most of them involve finding a piece of a display and returning it to where it belongs. In the Castellan's castle, there is a display of a man on a horse fighting some kind of creature, which is revealed to be a chimera, a Greek mythological monster made from the head of a lion, body of a goat, and the tail of a serpent or dragon. The chimera was said to be the child of Typhon and the monstrous snake Echidna, who featured heavily in the story of Bellerophon. Bellerophon means he who slays the monster, a title he earned by killing the chimera while riding Pegasus, the winged horse. While the horse in the picture doesn't have wings, it's clearly meant to be Bellerophon in this context, since that is the only major story featuring a chimera, a warrior, and a horse. The chimera is a trial Bellerophon must defeat as part of his path to being a hero. Leon, too, must defeat the chimera, in the sense that he must complete the puzzle to continue. But it's also a sign of what's to come. The word chimera in the modern sense also refers to any creature made of various parts of other animals, which almost all the later monsters in-game can be considered as. Leon is Bellerophon, defeating the chimera in order to return home a hero. Another puzzle in the castle is set in the maze, where Leon must find two pieces of another symbol and set them into a door to move forward. The image is of a crescent moon set over an eerie set of green eyes and a face in a tree. The symbol is interesting because of where it is. By unlocking this door, Leon is reunited with his star-crossed love interest, Ada Wong. The moon is a feminine figure in most mythologies. It represents fertility, especially the menstrual cycle, and it's also heavily associated with the occult. The face resembles a figure from multiple cultures generally called the Green Man, or an Irish myth, the Der Cora, meaning man in the tree. He generally appears as a man's face, usually green, surrounded or made up of plant life and trees. He is a figure of the natural world, growth, and life. Interestingly, there is a place called the Green Man Maze, a modern creation that was built to celebrate the 21st century. Even more interesting, the team behind Resident Evil 4 visited Wales during their research. The completed item is called the Blue Moonstone. Moonstone is a real gem, which historically has been thought to contain the captured rays of moonlight. It was believed this stone could help the owner tap into magical powers bestowed by the moon. Moreover, they were fertility symbols, said to balance the menstrual cycle, a stone that was associated with lovers and love making. It's a very interesting piece to be set before the meeting of Ada Wong. Altogether, the symbols represent life, 
and the process that makes life. A stone that increases fertility and aids lovers, with a symbol of female power and sex hanging over the face that represents the natural world. It's a symbol of love and passion, and it's necessary in order to unlock the door to meeting Ada once again, a symbol of their very passionate relationship. The symbol itself is broken into two pieces, and when you examine the door, it says two moons make one. In context with the other details, this seems, well, a somewhat on-the-nose reference to becoming one with each other. There's more that hints at this passion between Leon and Ada. There's a painting in the room where they meet called Primavera by Botticelli. It's a famously enigmatic painting due to the inclusion of various mythic figures who are unassociated with each other. Two of them are the figures of Venus, goddess of love, and Cupid. Primavera means spring in Italian, and Chloris, the goddess of spring, is also in the image. It is said to be a painting that represents life and fertility, just like the blue moonstone. The painting is seen in the background throughout the scene reintroducing the two lovers. Moreover, the room that Leon and Ada meet in is a bedroom, and a plush mattress is only a few feet from their meeting point. Seems to me that Shinji Mikami and the team behind Resident Evil 4 had a very pointed message relating to Leon and Ada's relationship. A later puzzle involves yet another set of animal symbols. The player has to retrieve an eagle, a panther, and a snake to get through the fortress. The image shows the panther and the eagle attacking a nest of snakes. The snakes are caught in the creature's claws. The snake item is found on Crawzer, the character who used to be Leon's friend, but is now his enemy and attempts to kill him. The snake has represented many things in many faiths, but in Christianity it is the infamous sign of evil. The snake that tempted Eve, a creature associated with the underworld and demons. It is no surprise that this is the creature Crawzer is carrying. The eagle, however, is a symbol of power and authority that has been part of the heraldry of everything from the Roman Empire to Napoleon. The panther, as a big cat, is a symbol of power and courage, an agile predator. Both are powerful predatory creatures who seem to be defeating the snake, a symbol of evil. The symbols are even referred to as holy creatures. It's possible to connect this further to Leon. His name in Spanish means lion, another big cat. If Crawzer is the snake, this image could be depicting Leon defeating his enemy. Many of the puzzles can be associated with religious imagery. The grails needed to unlock a door in the castle are referred to as holy grails, and that specific wording is popularly used to refer to the cup which Jesus used the Last Supper. There's also a puzzle involving a dinner that refers to both bread and wine, which resembles the Last Supper. The hall that puzzle is in is even called the Last Supper Corridor in the Resident Evil 4 guidebook. The artwork around the castle is heavily influenced by religion, the stained glass, the holy women, the images which resemble popular religious art such as that made during the Renaissance. The castle is designed to invoke the feeling of a chapel or church, further associating the evil we are facing with the religious dogma of the cult. The general architecture of the game can find its origin in real-world places, specifically Spain and Wales, where the team spent some time studying the local area. A truly determined fan of the series has found many possible real-world inspirations for the game, including a lot of compellingly similar pieces of art and buildings in Spain and a castle in Wales. You can see all the comparisons on his Twitter. The castle is influenced by the Catholic faith the practitioners once followed, and which the cult emulates in much of its symbolism. The fact that Mendez was once a Catholic priest, and the villagers his followers, combined with the fact that the game is set in Spain, 
makes me think of a famous incident of violent Christian action in the country, the Spanish Inquisition, founded by Catholic monarchs. It's no wonder that this was the setting chosen for a game which displays the dangers of fervent belief. The cult's followers don't really believe in the cult, of course. They have no free will of their own. But that's the metaphor at play in the game. The Plagas turn these followers into mindless people who will do whatever the cult leaders tell them to do. Just as many major cults the world over have managed to indoctrinate and control countless people, the game uses the Plagas to make a statement about the dangers of cultish faiths. Holy locations and holy symbols are constantly associated with the enemy. The cult members wear what looks like monk habits in some cases, or a medieval executioner's garb. Another type wears an animal skull with curved horns, a ram's head, a symbol heavily associated with the occult and Satan. The motif appears a few times in the game associated with the cult. They were often sacrificial animals in certain traditions, and in game we see a masked figure performing something that resembles a blood sacrifice. The leader, Sadler, wears the most old-fashioned and occultist look of the game, but unlike everyone else, he is free of mind control and doesn't believe in his own ideas. The cult is a front, a trick in order to gain power. Like real cults, the Illuminados is led by a charismatic and manipulative individual who uses religious faith to get what he wants. The Plaga themselves are ancient life forms revived from fossils. They are parasites only able to live off of others, and they have a remarkably similar appearance to another sci-fi monster, the facehuggers from the Alien series. There are other similarities. The Verdugo has some things in common to the grown alien creatures, and both species need other bodies to reproduce and live, and both serve a larger queen creature. The area where Leon fights the Verdugo also heavily resembles the scenery of the alien movies, as opposed to the rest of the game. The Plagas appearance also appears in the Illuminados symbol. It is the body of a Plagas straightened out, and this symbol appears throughout the game, sometimes by itself, sometimes with other symbols such as the Triskelion, which is a symbol of eternity. Resident Evil 4 is a classic game with an impact on the industry we are still feeling today. It was a great risk with a big payoff, changing the camera, gameplay, graphics, and thematic elements of the Resident Evil series, expanding what the universe could do in amazing ways. Without it, we might not have new games in the series coming out today. And I, for one, will be eternally grateful for this fun, fascinating game.